Hello viewers, uh, in the last session we have seen uh, the, the theorem on counting zeros of an analytic function uh, inside a, a closed curve. And uh, we have seen as a consequence uh, the Rouche's theorem or one version of Rouche's theorem and we used that to prove uh, uh, the local version of maximum modulus theorem. We use the uh, counting zeros theorem to prove the local version of the maximum modulus theorem. So, uh, today we are going to see yet another consequence of the uh, theorem on counting zeros, uh, an important one, uh, a very important one namely the uh, open mapping theorem. So, uh, so first I will begin with uh, stating the global version of the maximum modulus theorem and instead of proving it directly. I will take an indirect route, I will, uh, I will prove the open mapping theorem and show that the maximum modulus theorem, the global version or the local version can also be seen as uh, a consequence or a corollary to the open mapping theorem. Okay. So, uh, I will take that route. Uh, so, we need to build some tools before that. So, firstly let me begin by stating the global version of uh, the maximum modulus theorem. Okay. So, uh, maximum modulus principle. Okay. So, let G be a bounded region. And let F be analytic. on uh, or let me say yeah, in G and continuous on the boundary. Okay. Continuous on the closure actually on the whole close closure of G okay. closure of G. So, recall that is denoted by G bar. Okay. So, then uh, the modulus of F attains its maximum on the boundary of G. Okay. So, recall we denote uh, the boundary of G by do G, okay, which is uh, the closure of G minus uh, the interior of G, which is G itself, because G is a region. Okay. So, uh, so, the maximum of a modulus of f is attained on the boundary of G. So, that is the statement of the maximum modulus principle. So, as I said we can uh, directly use a, a topological argument and use the local version of maximum modulus theorem to prove, uh, prove this uh, principle. Okay. But, uh, what we are going to do is we are going to develop tools for uh, proving the open mapping theorem as a result of the counting zeros uh, theorem. Okay. And then uh, uh, we will see the proof of this maximum modulus principle as a consequence. Okay. So, uh, recall. So, in that direction we will recall something. So, recall the index of a closed curve with respect to a point. So, sometime when discussing uh, Cauchy's theorem or various versions of Cauchy's theorem, we had the concept of the index of a closed curve with respect to a point. Okay. So, what this was, uh, was as follows, uh, we define the index of, uh, okay, so let me recall the lemma which actually had uh, said something. Okay. So, if gamma is a piecewise uh, differentiable closed curve, okay. we can prove using uh, a smooth curve, we can prove the lemma using smooth curve and generalize it to piecewise differentiable closed curve like like we have seen earlier okay so few points 
uh, or a finite number of points on the curve having uh, I mean where uh, gamma is not differentiable will not actually affect the, the uh, proof of this lemma. Okay. So, um, so, if gamma is a piecewise differentiable closed curve uh, not necessarily simple that is important. Okay, uh, which which does not pass through uh, the point A. Okay, A belongs to C. Okay, then the value of the integral of the contour integral. Uh, integral gamma d z by uh, z minus a uh, is an integer multiple of uh, 2 pi i. Okay. So, this lemma we proved some time uh, back okay. and and then uh, based on this lemma since uh, uh, this integral evaluates to an integer multiple of 2 pi i we named that integer as uh, as the index of gamma with respect to a okay so defined so we defined based on this lemma uh, n gamma a okay to be 1 by 2 pi i so, n gamma a is an integer which is defined to be 1 by 2 pi i times the integral contour integral over gamma of d z by z minus a okay, called n gamma a uh, is called the index of uh, the closed curve gamma. with respect to a. Okay. This is also called as winding number okay, owing to the geometric significance that if you if a is the center of a circle or if a lies inside a simple closed curve, okay, uh, then, uh, then the index of that uh, circle with respect to uh, the point a is 1 times 2 pi i or if you have a circle which goes around uh, n times. So, if you have a parameterization of a circle which goes around the point a n times uh, visually, then the index of uh, that curve gamma which goes around n times uh, with respect to the point a uh, is n is the integer n. Okay. So, uh, owing to that geometric significance also called n gamma a is also called winding number. So, that is suggestive of the geometric significance of gamma with respect to A. All right. So, some properties are in order. Okay. So, properties of n gamma A. So, once again the assumptions are that gamma is a, is a, a closed curve uh, which does not pass through the point A okay, uh, and uh, it is a piecewise uh, differentiable curve as well gamma. gamma okay. So, then the properties of n gamma under these assumptions 1 n gamma A is equal to or n minus gamma A rather is equal to minus of n gamma i. Okay. That is the first property. Second, if gamma lies in the uh, inside of a circle, recall we made that notion uh, very precise uh, what the inside of um, a simple closed curve is. So, in this case we take a circle and if we assume that gamma lies in the inside of a circle, okay, then uh, n gamma a is equal to 0 for all points 
a outside of the circle okay 3 um, so for 3 let's uh, notice that when you have a closed curve okay so uh, before stating 3 let me make a remark okay so this is a remark Uh, gamma is a closed curve. What that means is uh, our closed curves are functions from intervals to the complex plane and we are calling the image of gamma as the trace of gamma, gamma star. Okay. So, gamma star is a closed and bounded set in the complex plane. Okay. So, uh, uh, c minus gamma, uh, so it is a compact set in c. So, c minus gamma is gamma star okay, is open in c. So, what that tells us is that um, uh, gamma c minus gamma star okay, is uh, actually divided into components. Okay, uh, which are the maximal open sets whose union is c minus gamma star. Okay. So, uh, so, here is a visual example suppose this is your uh, gamma star in c, then uh, you have component 1 which is uh, this open set which does not include the boundary okay. and then you have component 2 which is right here the hashed area okay. and then there is the component 3 which is uh, sort of uh, you know outside the visual boundary here okay. so which is everything else in c minus gamma star okay so it's the unbounded component okay so this is a visual example but uh, we can say that c minus gamma star is an open set so, it is a union of its components, components recall are the maximal open sets, uh, uh, maximal open connected sets. Okay. So, uh, you take the connected uh, component containing a point in C minus gamma star okay, and then uh, take the maximal such okay, and then form their union and then you get uh, C minus gamma star. Okay. And on these components, so property 3 says that uh, oh, oh, before that I will also want to say that. So, uh, gamma is set to determine the components of C minus gamma star okay. and exactly one of these is unbounded. Okay. Of course, it is a compact set. So, uh, I mean gamma star is a compact set in, in C, the, uh, the complement of it will contain uh, some points which have very large modulus. Okay. So, take uh, because a compact set is bounded. Okay. So, uh, you take a point uh, which is very far off from the origin in terms of modulus and then you take the connected component containing it and it is exactly one because you are anyway collecting uh, the connected component containing uh, points which have very large modulus. Okay. All right. So, um, so it is unbounded and here is the uh, third property n gamma a is constant okay, is constant function on components of c minus gamma star and is 0 and is the 0 function on the unbounded component. of c minus gamma star. Okay. So, what that means is 
n gamma i can be different constants on different components, but on on a given component it is a constant function. Okay, so that's what is the is the meaning of this statement. Okay, so uh, so here is uh, the proof of these properties. Well, the proof of one and two are fairly easy. Uh, the proof of one is that n minus gamma a recall what minus gamma is. It is not minus gamma of t uh, for t belonging to the uh, interval 0 1. Okay. Uh, it is the inverse, I mean uh, it is gamma star traced in the opposite direction. Okay. So, uh, recall that. So, uh, it this is equal to 1 by 2 pi i by definition integral over minus gamma of 1 by z minus a d z. Okay. So, uh, gamma is being traced in the opposite direction from the ending point to starting point uh, for gamma. Okay. So, that is minus gamma. So, by definition we already captured this property this is equal to minus 1 by 2 pi i of integral contour integral over gamma of 1 by z minus a d z okay. and this is precisely minus of n gamma a. Okay. So, that is easy that proof is easy and also uh, property 2. Uh, the prop, uh, property 2 can be proved easily. Okay. So, if gamma lies on the inside of a circle, okay, gamma belongs to the i of a circle, okay, then for any a belongs to outside of circle of that circle, okay, 1 by z minus a is analytic. function inside the circle. Okay. Uh, okay, I uh, on the disk the interior of which is the interior of I of circle. Okay, the interior of uh, the inside of a circle is a is a disc, and by the disc version of Cauchy's theorem, we know that, and by the disc version of Cauchy's theorem. we know that uh, integral over uh, gamma okay so any closed curve gamma okay of 1 by z minus a dz is equal to 0 okay all right so that's the proof of property 2 property 3 gamma star is uh, compact Okay. So, um, so let A and B belong to the same region, I mean to say the same component of C minus gamma star. What I want to show is that n gamma A is equal to n gamma B. Okay. So, what uh, so, I am going to use the topology of the component. So, recall that if you have a component the, the maximal connected set open connected set, then given any two points in this component there is a polygonal path connecting these two. Okay. So, that is from the uh, topological uh, topology of the complex plane. Okay. So, uh, using that fact, so there is a uh, there is a uh, polygonal path connecting these particular A and B. Okay. So, if I can show that n gamma of x is is, is a constant on a straight line segment, then you can extend this fact to the polygonal path and claim that n gamma x is, is constant for any polygonal path altogether. Okay. So, then I can conclude that n gamma a is equal to n gamma b. Here is the path that I will take. So, uh, there is a polygonal path connecting 
A and B lying completely in the component. of C minus gamma star containing A and B. Okay. So, the point is it is clear of gamma star, it is the, the, the polygonal path does not intersect gamma star. Okay. So, I e uh, this path does not intersect gamma star. Okay. So, so uh, it is enough to show that if A and B are joined by a straight line, connecting A and B, which does not intersect gamma star, okay, then n of gamma A is equal to n of gamma B. So, outside, outside the segment joining A and B, this is a standard thing that one does. Uh, z minus a divided by z minus b, the complex number z minus a divided by z minus b for z outside the segment a and b okay, is never real and less than or equal to 0 simultaneously. So, here is a b, if we take a straight line joining a b. Okay. So, z minus a by z minus b uh, takes okay, the map z minus a divided by z minus b takes b to infinity okay, and then uh, it takes a to 0. So, we have a line joining 0 and infinity well it actually um, takes this line this map f of z equals z minus a by z minus b takes the line segment joining a b to this negative real axis to this whole negative real axis. Okay. So, if we ignore the line segment joining uh, a and b, okay, uh, the points outside it uh, are precisely mapped onto the complement of the negative real axis via the map z minus a by z minus b. Okay. And we know that uh, when we remove the negative real axis, we can define a uh, branch of logarithm, an analytic branch of logarithm on the complement of the, uh, of the uh, negative real axis. Okay. So, that is the point. So, um, so, what we will do is, uh, so the principal branch, you can take a branch of logarithm, an analytic branch. Okay. So, I will take the principal branch of logarithm of log z minus a by z minus b okay, uh, is analytic on the complement of uh, the line segment joining a and b. Okay. So, uh, since this principal branch is analytic, uh, we can differentiate it and we know what its differentiation is d by d z of log z minus a by z minus b uh, is your 1 by z minus a. So, log z minus a by z minus b, I am writing that as log z minus a minus log z minus b uh, for all z in the appropriate place. Okay. So, uh, then this is the differentiation of this is 1 by z minus a minus 1 by z minus b for uh, z belongs to uh, the complement of the line segment. Okay. So, I will just use a shorter notation I will just say uh, the 
a b uh, c minus a b what that means is the complement of the line segment joining a b okay i'm just using a shortcut okay so then uh, gamma does not uh, meet the segment okay so gamma star does not intersect so uh, recall we are being sloppy about uh, gamma and gamma star what i mean by that is we uh, we agreed that we'll confuse between the curve itself and its trace okay so uh, i'll write gamma star or gamma okay gamma star does not intersect uh, this line segment joining ab so uh, the integration over gamma of uh, 1 by z minus a minus 1 by z minus b okay which is which has an anti derivative now the integrand has an anti derivative in the region of interest so if you take any closed curve uh, in that uh, in that region okay which, which lies entirely in the region you know that by the anti derivative theorem this has to equal uh, zero n gamma a is equal to n gamma b right because uh, this is also integral over gamma 1 by z minus a d z minus integral over gamma 1 by z minus b d z and each of these are 2 pi i times the uh, in index of gamma with respect to a or b. Okay. So, this is uh, okay. so these are equal. Okay. So, that proves property uh, 3. Okay. Uh, also, I claim that the unbounded component has uh, 0 as uh, its index. Okay, so uh, if if a is sufficiently large, okay, uh, then gamma is contained in uh, the interior of circle of radius uh, rho, where rho is strictly less than the modulus of a okay uh, then by the earlier property that if if gamma lies in the interior of a circle then for points outside the circle uh, this is zero uh, the, i mean the index is zero okay uh, then we have that the index of gamma with respect to uh, a is zero definitely okay by 2 and since uh, we just proved that uh, the function n of gamma x is constant on components of c minus gamma star. Uh, you know the, the value of n gamma a for any point a in the unbounded component has to be zero. Okay, so so uh, so n gamma a. Okay, I'll say b uh, is zero for any. Uh, b belongs to unbounded component. Component of c minus gamma star. All right. So that's the property. Okay. Uh, properties of this index. Okay. So now we are going to use this index and uh, try to sort of reinterpret the counting zeros theorem. Okay. And we'll see that that interpretation has. Uh, uh, good consequences by counting zeros theorem okay we had that if gamma is a simple closed curve okay then the integration the contour integration over gamma of f prime of z by f of z okay uh, of course gamma is contained should be contained in uh, region of analyticity Okay, I am not going to state this precisely, but uh, you already had this st statement of counting zeros theorem. So, I will say that if gamma is a simple closed curve contained in the region of analyticity of f, okay, then uh, integration over gamma of f prime z by f of z dz okay, gives you 2 pi i times um, n, where n is the number of zeros of uh, of f inside inside gamma counting multiplicity okay so uh, all right 
So, by uh, considering the map, okay, so consider the mapping w equals f of z. Okay. So, then d w will equal f prime of z d w d z. Okay. Also, let let capital gamma be the map of okay, be the uh, be the map gamma okay, so composed with f. Okay. So, um, so capital gamma is a curve. Okay, is a closed curve now. Right, gamma is a curve and f maps gamma uh, the simple closed curve gamma to somewhere else. Okay, so capital gamma is a closed curve in uh, the image of f. Okay, it's a, it's contained in the image of f. Uh, okay, so. Um, so, this left hand side okay, this left hand side integral over gamma f prime z d z by f of z can be reinterpreted as the integration contour integration over uh, capital gamma of d w by w okay, uh, that is now equal to. <coughs> so, by uh, substitution really okay, this contour this new contour integral is equal to 2 pi i times n. Okay, but so rewriting this, this is one by two pi i times integral over gamma of d w by w. Okay, which is nothing but the index of capital gamma with respect to zero. Okay, so this is a very useful interpretation. Okay, so it tells us that the index of the uh, of the uh, target curve, okay, with respect to zero, uh, target curve uh, via f of little gamma okay, with respect to 0 gives actually the number of zeros of f inside little gamma. Okay, this is very useful. Okay. So, uh, this is just the reinterpretation of that uh, counting zeros theorem, but we will put this to use. Okay. So, um, so uh, let what we will do is let uh, a be an arbitrary complex number. Okay. So, let a belong to c. I'll just say a belongs to c okay uh, and uh, apply counting zeros theorem to the function to uh, the function f of z minus a okay so the zeros of uh, Firstly, the zeros of f of z minus a are the solutions to the equation f of z equals a. Okay, f of z minus a equals zero implies f of z equals a. So uh, the number of zeros, okay, of f of z minus a. Inside a circle, let us say a simple closed circle uh, gamma, okay, uh, counting multiplicity okay, uh, is okay, is say m, call that m this is integral over gamma of g prime of z divided by uh, or rather I am using f. Okay. So, this is 1 by 2 pi i okay, times uh, f prime of z divided by f of z minus a, because the derivative of f of z minus a is f prime of z still. Okay, and this we said is the index of uh, capital gamma with respect to the point A now, okay, where capital gamma is f circle little gamma. 
Okay. So, where we use the simple closed curve, uh, we use a simple circle around A. Okay. So, uh, so we have that. Okay. So, if A and B belong to the same region, okay, same component actually determined by capital gamma. Okay, by property 3 above. So, we know that uh, the index function is constant on components. So, if we pick two points in the components determined by capital gamma, capital gamma is also a closed curve. So, it determines some components. Uh, so, if you pick two points in, in, in the, in the uh, complement of capital gamma star then uh, you know that the index of those two points has to be equal. Okay. The interpretation here is that uh, the number of times f of z takes a will have to equal uh, the number of times f of z takes b. Okay. It, might not, it might not take a at all. So, in which case it will not take b at all. Okay. So, but uh, the number of times it takes a should equal the number of times it takes b. Okay. So, by property 3 above uh, we know that n gamma a is equal to n gamma b. Okay, so, that has an interpretation that uh, and so, the number of zeros of, uh, of f of z minus a okay, inside little gamma is equal to the number of zeros. I will just put hash of zeros of f of z minus b inside gamma. So, said, in, said otherwise the number of times f takes a inside gamma little gamma should be equal to the number of times f takes b inside little gamma. Okay. So, of course, counting multiplicity. Okay. So, now here is a theorem which is okay, from which the open mapping theorem will follow. Okay. So, suppose that f of z okay, f is analytic at z naught. A function f is analytic at a point z naught okay, and um, f of z naught is equal to w naught and that f of z minus w naught okay, has a 0 of order n. At z naught. Notice that when I say that f has a f of z minus w naught has a 0 of order n I am automatically assuming that f of z is not identically w naught uh, in a neighborhood of z naught. Okay. So, it has a 0 of order n, n finite. Okay. So, if here is the conclusion if epsilon naught is uh, sufficiently small, okay, then there exists a corresponding delta positive okay, such that for all A with modulus of A minus w naught strictly less than delta uh, the equation f of z equals a okay, has exactly n roots inside the disk modulus of z minus z naught less than 
strictly less than epsilon. Okay. So, so this is a very important theorem. Okay. It says that there is uh, there is some delta around W naught. Okay. There, there is a delta neighborhood of the uh, W naught. Okay. So, uh, which is uh, mapped on to by a subset of a neighborhood of Z naught. Okay, and in such a way that uh, it is an n to 1 correspondence, if the where n is the order of the 0 at z naught uh, at z naught of f of z minus w naught. Okay. So, f of z minus w naught is definitely 0 at z naught. Okay. So, if n is the order of 0, then any uh, there is a there is a small neighborhood around w naught such that any point in that neighborhood is actually taken up by f in some neighborhood of uh, z naught okay and then it does so n times exactly okay so I'll, I'll sort of draw a picture to elaborate that so here is w naught okay here is z naught so there is a small the claim is that the theorem claims that there is a small neighborhood delta neighborhood of this this is delta such that if you take any point here Okay, then there are exactly n pre images counting multiplicity. Of course, you have to entertain multiplicity. There are n pre images here, uh, which all map to that point, where n here refers to the order of 0 uh, of f of z minus w naught. So, this is uh, interesting. Uh, so, here is the proof i mean as a consequence we'll actually have the open mapping theorem because uh, now we can say that uh, if you take z naught and the target w naught via f okay then there is a open set around this there is a neighborhood around this such that uh, you know you have a uh, you have something from here from the neighborhood of z naught which is mapped uh, to this neighborhood. Okay. So, every point in this is a target uh, in the, from the neighborhood of z naught. Okay. So, that actually gives the open mapping theorem. Okay. So, let us see the proof of this uh, theorem. So, we saw that uh, the zeros of an analytic function are isolated of a uh, function which is not identically 0 okay, uh, are uh, isolated. Okay. So, the 0 of uh, f of z minus w naught is also isolated. So, the 0 of f of z minus w naught at z naught is isolated. So, there is so there is an epsilon positive okay, such that f of z uh, f is defined and analytic. on uh, modulus of z minus z naught strictly less than or equal to epsilon. Okay. So, this is better said as b uh, z naught epsilon bar. Okay. So, by contracting that uh, I the neighborhood of the isolated 0 enough, I can assume that there is a closed disk inside you know inside uh, on which uh, f is defined and analytic. Okay. So, f is defined and analytic on that and uh, z naught is the only 0, only 0 of f of z minus w naught in b z naught epsilon bar. Okay. So, what that gives is uh, let, let uh, gamma be a simple closed curve whose trace is. Okay. So, let gamma be the curve, I will just say the curve uh, modulus of z minus z naught is equal to epsilon. So, it is it is a circle of radius epsilon around um, z naught okay, oriented positively, we will assume oriented positively. 
uh, it does not matter for us, but, but what we will do is uh, now let capital gamma be the image of gamma star okay, um, under f okay, under the mapping w equals f of z. Okay. So, since w z naught belongs to uh, c minus gamma star of course, w naught will belong to c minus uh, capital gamma star. Okay. So, uh, and since uh, this is open is open okay there is a neighborhood of w naught which is in c minus uh, gamma star okay so there is a delta positive such that uh, w belongs to c minus gamma star for w belonging to a ball of radius delta around w naught okay so this is our candidate um, which we are seeking okay so now if you take any two points in this ball since this ball is clear of gamma star so there is no intersection of this ball with gamma star uh, um, then by uh, remark above okay uh, f takes a and b okay the same number of times okay what is the remark we said that um, n capital gamma a okay so um, i should complete this inside i'll say inside of little gamma so we said that n gamma a is equal to n gamma b n uh, i mean the index function on the uh, components of de determined by capital gamma is a constant function okay so n gamma a is equal to n gamma b for a b belonging to the same component uh, determined by capital gamma so in particular when uh, when they are in this ball they are in the same component okay so n gamma a should equal n gamma b okay so uh, this happens but we know a specific point which is already in this ball namely w not okay but since the order of uh, yeah i mean uh, uh, but since the value w not is taken by f n times okay um, every value a belongs to b w not delta is taken n times by f inside gamma okay counting multiplicity this is exactly what we wanted okay um, so that is the okay so that is the conclusion f of z equals a uh, has exactly n roots uh, inside the disk uh, modulus of z minus z naught is strictly less than epsilon okay the inside of gamma is nothing but inside of little gamma is nothing but uh, the interior of the disk which is precisely uh, this region okay so that is the conclusion okay so that completes the proof of this theorem one more remark okay so the zeros of f prime are isolated since f prime is also when f is analytic f prime is also an analytic function so the zeros of f prime are isolated if we choose epsilon so that f prime is non zero in zero strictly less than mod z minus z not strictly less than epsilon okay then the roots of f of z equals a okay for a not equal to 
w naught okay are simple i e f of z equals a does not have does not have a 0 of multiplicity 2. In 0 strictly less than mod z minus z naught is strictly less than uh, epsilon. Okay. So, that follows uh, from uh, you know Taylor's theorem uh, using local uh, power series expansion if you like. Okay. So, uh, so, we will see some consequences of this theorem uh, next time, I will stop here.